Mopar people, you know it can be an adventure with me sometimes. We are actually headed out to uh, go pick up a new project. Well, a new motor anyway. Um, got a buddy of mine. He's pulling a motor right now for me. And hopefully he'll let me film a little bit of it. We are way back in the boonies. Let me show you that real quick. Stay in here. <laughs> Three people. What was it, 600, 700 pounds? You got some wires connected right here. Oh, I got a wire. Yep. Uh, uh, you want to cut look, them? Look right down there behind your right foot. Got some cutters over there? Got some cutters. All right. We're live. We're going to snap it forward. Like you're ready to wait? It'll be a load of fun. Yeah. Well, I'll oh, be I told down. you to go snap it forward. All right. <laughs> back it up a little. He's yeah. still standing on there. If you could just give him a minute, I think he's going to try to back, well, I think we need back to, up. Hey, Joe. Well, you're probably right. Yeah, sta stand, right on, stand on this, and I'll push that uh, off the oil pan a little bit. Transmission mount has got a, uh, a stud stuck down in that hole right there. So the, okay. <laughs> I knew we were getting tight. Right, let's put the next tight up. We got this one pulled out. What's it? I was filming it from a from a YouTube man. There's where it used to live. I won't tell them where you live or anything. <laughs> You mean put the charger in the background or not? Hey, yeah, some views right there. Boom. Was it 68 or 69? 70. 70, okay. I can't, you say I don't see any marker lights, so I can't. Okay, yeah, I see them on the front now. Gotcha. And then you got the racy dark finally. I need to ask you about that one. Back in the shop here uh, with my new, new to me, brand new to me, uh, Magnum. 360, 5.9 liter. Uh, this was out of that truck that you just saw a minute ago. That was kind of a trip, us getting the motor out. Uh, when I got there, they had the motor basically hanging, motor and transmission just hung up by a few little things. It ended up being, I think, AC line and maybe one of uh, the ground wire, hot wire or something. So they got cut. Most, most of the electronics on the engine, like the wiring harness, uh, he did actually unplug, so it's all complete. I'm probably not going to use it, but maybe I can sell it or somebody needs it, whatever, let me know. Um, you know, but other than that, pretty straightforward. Uh, I, I was wanting to kind of discuss on, um, you know, just bring up the, the idea of did I buy a good engine? And it's kind of hard to tell from the outside. I mean, it, you know, you, uh, did you get a good deal? Did you not get a good deal? Uh, so this is the Magnum 360. It's a 96 model, fuel injected, obviously. Um, and I did get the flex plate with it. Let me show you that. So I actually actually unbolted the converter a second ago. But I got that, that flex plate. If you check out magnumswap.com, they tell you basically everything you need, that what, what will work, what won't work. But they said that that weighted flex plate is important, and I should definitely keep it. Uh, to use with my with a neutral balance converter so that you know 360s are in external balanced anyway the magnum is a little bit different external balance the 360 so having that converter and having the harmonic balancer that's all there so i can reuse it um, i should be able to bolt up the stock la stuff to the front of this if i want to or i can keep this stuff uh, but some of the stuff i wanted to look at on you know, whether or not this is a good engine, just from, you know, some quick detective work, sometimes notorious for the heads cracking. They crack between the seats, just like my other 360 heads that I had. So I actually watched uh, an episode, the guy on the gas tap, 
you can check him out. He's, he seems to be pretty knowledgeable. Um, and he just mentioned, you know, when the, when the engine gets hot, they run, they run hot, uh, though, you know, they're more prone to crack, which is true, but an engine's going to heat cycle anyway, you know, hot, cold, hot, cold, uh, you know, a million, a million times, whatever. But, uh, this one, it actually, it has a good fan clutch. That's, that's pretty, pretty, uh, hard to turn still. And it does, I, I can't tell if they replaced it or not. I didn't see anything on it. Uh, other things on the engine, like we're just playing detective for a minute. Uh, that's a remanufactured alternator. So it's fairly new. So somebody, somebody was driving the truck, kind of keeping it up. That's a Deco belt. So it's not factory. It's not, it's actually, it's not brand new, which to me is a good sign. Like somebody didn't just go pull this out of the weeds and try to get it going. Uh, going around the distributor cap looks pretty good See if you can see that um, I mean, it's a little greasy from Maybe the install or something wires. I Did not check all the wires were there uh, It just says high temp seven millimeter suppression whatever, but these are probably just the cheap uh, AutoZone or O'Reilly wires that, that you know you can buy for replacement so somebody did at least I uh, try to keep the motor up a little bit. Um, he said that it had 109,000 miles, I believe is what the ad said. I knew the guy. Uh, he seemed to be a pretty decent guy. And, you know, he let me check out some of his Mopars there and film them for a minute, which was cool. We just, we're, we're trying to make a quick afternoon out of it. Get in and get out. Pull, pulling the dipstick. And just starting... I even start all the way up here. Like that's pretty clean. Try not to wipe it off. Uh, wiped a little bit, but it's a little, I mean, it's low. The oil's dirty. It's not like beautifully clean, but if, if I wipe the entire dipstick and look at that, not super bad. I think that piece of crap was on there anyway. But you know, I can wipe, I'll wipe it a couple times, look. I don't honestly know what I'm gonna do with this engine. If y'all have some ideas, let me know in the comments. I thought about, you know, just trying to do a, um, if I put it in my dark sport and keep that, three, that other 360 for something, or, you know, trying to I thought about making maybe making this a test mule motor, um, kind of tear you know tear it apart, new rings, new bearings, uh, obviously gaskets everywhere, um, you know put it in my truck, and which I I do have a swap manifold for it. Um, if you'll remember the red sled project, he actually. I either bought or he gave me the uh, that old intake off there that has a dual pattern and we were using the side pattern and the side pattern was pulling into the side of the um, and the bolts were actually binding on the side of the intake and not letting the intake drop all the way down on the engine so um, all I got to do is move those plugs over and I can use the straight down holes for this so that'll actually work out for me so I've got an intake already um, you know my um, LA series headers bolt up, which is nice. And they don't, you know, the water jackets are plugged off now, so they're not, you don't have to seal those up anymore. But I don't know, for $500, uh, if we keep investigating, that's what I, you know, let me get back to the, what I was doing here. Uh, you know, pull a plug. I'm gonna actually pull all the plugs. A little dirty not bad i mean there's no giant buildup of oil anywhere on that uh let's see auto lights all right you know they don't look they don't look brand new but they look newer so someone's somewhat maintained this engine um i'm gonna go ahead and i'm gonna pull all the plugs real quick and we'll take a look at it one second
Let's go back to number one. Number one actually looks pretty nice. Get my pointer here. So this stuff here looks fine. Everything of that, all of that. Um, that's still pretty white, which it's, I mean, it's a little bit yellow, not bad. So I'm basically, I'm going to call this my best plug, that number one. Uh, picking up number two. So we're just comparing. A uh, little bit more carbon around this. Not a big one. Strap looks fine. Uh, number five. We're getting a little darker on number five. Hopefully you can tell that. Uh, the electrode is a little bit darker. Darker around here. The porcelain's a little bit darker. So, and the strap is actually darker. So that's, hopefully you can tell that. So I'll keep my number one, still the best. Number seven, looked like she ran a little lean. That strap is pretty white, chalky looking. Uh, electrodes white, porcelain is chalky white. And then the blackness of carbon around there. That, I'm hoping that's, that's not a sign of a uh, the head being cracked and a little bit of antifreeze seeping in. Something like that. Um, need, to, need to keep a close eye on number seven. Uh, jump over to number two. Number two looks nice, just like number one does. Actually, might, that might be my best plug. Number two, I'm gonna put number one back down. So I'll put one back down, here comes four. Uh, darker. Not, not, not anything built up on the strap or anything. Got some carbon going there. Number six. Six is a little ugly. Um, not as much as number eight, but I can definitely tell those back, back four cylinders we're having kind of a hard life. We zoom in on that. Um, porcelain's darker. This stuff here, there's a little bit of buildup. See if you can see me scraping that. Uh, I need to keep an eye on that one. There could, there actually could be a crack between those two. I'm not totally sure, but the plug itself was oily. The the uh, threads of that. That doesn't mean that the inside of that cylinder looks like that, but maybe. Um, number eight is probably my worst plug out of all of them. That's probably, that might be the oil burner there. Zoom, focus, there we go. The, uh, the porcelain is pretty nasty looking. Electro's dark. The whole top of that dude's dark, so. What I believe, but right now, if I had to guess, there might be a crack between six and eight, and there might be a crack between five and seven. So I really need to look at those. I don't want to have to buy some Magnum heads. I was hoping to, um, you know, get an get an engine. If anything, I would steal the heads off this engine. Um, if not, if if not, I would just do a whole entire rebuild on the engine for the channel, kind of like I did my 360 rebuild. Which, uh, I mean, I own, I own the engine now, so it's my baby. That side was the worst. Let me go around. I'm going to pull this side's valve cover real quick and try to check back here. That PCV is over those two. I don't know if it was, probably doesn't have anything to do with this issue, but maybe. You know, that, that could be a part that they ne neglected to ever replace. Got a, got a nice rattle to it. I'm gonna vacuum this out and pull that valve cover. Well, that does not look bad to me. It's pretty dry. There could be a, it could tell a whole new story inside of that big baffle, but. Um, set it aside and look.
That rocker's a little loose. Which it could be. Uh, anything out of the ordinary. So the valve springs look pretty good. I don't see any cracks in those. Rocker arms, etc. That was my worst cylinder for sure. Push rods are still there. I guess I can pop pop those two off and look. See if you can watch the gauge and the rockers at the same time. <sighs> Nothing. And I'm gonna spray a squirt a little shit in there. Maybe that'll help it some. Something. After spraying a little bit of oil down in there, turn that dude over. It's finally up. Uh, what do you call that? 85. So not bad. See if I can see if I can do it twice. Show you. <sighs> I'm basically just spin it, spin it the best I can in my hand. Oh yeah, same thing. So, a little thick Lucas oil mix helped that, but uh, it was definitely burning oil. So it's going going to need rings, bearings. All that stuff, but I guess the million dollar question is Do y'all think I got a good deal on this one? 96 model supposed to have supposed to have hundred and nine thousand miles uh, You saw the plugs um, Turns over smoothly, but I would definitely rebuild it for sticking in something. Let me know in the comments what y'all think what should I even do with this thing? Uh, you know, get it running, put a, file the rings and put a 300 shot of nitrous on it. I, I, I'd have to file a nitrous kit, but I don't know. I'm up for ideas. So thank y'all for watching and I will see you next time.